Hello, this is Tov from Trifold Productive with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can add smudges, raindrops, dust particles, and scratches to any material or any substance or model actually in Blender. Using the Smudger Pro add-on is pretty straightforward and it's pretty accurate and it does a really good job of doing that. Now, I'm using Blender 2.81 Tongue Twister, uh, but you can use it for 2.81 to 3.3. And it renders in even cycles. I'm using like an older version of it. And I don't know if the uh, developer has made a newer version, but for the version that I'm using, it works in EV in terms of rendering and in cycles. <clears throat> and it looks e equally as good. Now, the installation process is a bit different. Uh, once you've downloaded the uh, add on, I'll leave a link of it uh, below this video so you can download it yourselves and try it out. It'll give you two folders. It will give you the add-on itself, plus the folder that contains the materials for creating the smudges and so on and so forth. Now the add-on itself, that needs to stay zipped, but the uh, folder that contains the smudges needs to be unzipped. And once you've unzipped it, it looks like this. It has all the things you need to create your elements in or on your models. And then you go to edit and then preferences, install, navigate to where you've installed it, click on install that on. I've already done that myself. And let me type it in here so you can go to the next step. And you put a check in the box and it activates it. Now the add on needs to find out where the material it needs to create the smudges is. So you click on this folder and you navigate to where. Uh, this unzip folder is, you click on that, and then you click on update images, and then you're ready to go. Now, we've got Suzanne here. She's been imported. She's been subdivided twice and smoothed out so we can see what uh, the smudges look like on her as we apply it. And the add-on is not in your tool panel here. It's actually in the texture panel off to the far right. Now first to see the results of the smudges as we work on the smudges themselves after you change the appearance in the viewport. And we're going to click on this icon right here to do that. Now I'm going to change the color. We're going to add a texture to Suzanne. Left click there and click on new. Right now the texture is white. We're going to change the color to a darker color. Left click on that and let's turn it to red. Kind of a dark red. Now the add-on works uh, on objects that are UV unwrapped and that are not UV unwrapped. For myself, I personally tend to leave it unwrapped myself and it works, for me it works just as well. And we're gonna scroll down here, let's minimize this and this also. And there it is, Smudger Pro. And it'll say make this slot Active, so you can just click on that to make the slot active to accept. You don't really have to do that all the time. I just do it sometimes to just uh, follow the instructions, so to speak. And it says this show does not yet contain smudger, uh, smudger setup, which is fine. We haven't applied one yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have all these presets there. You can just click on each one. You click on the presets and then you click on add automatic setup. And that's, this is just like an introduction to the add-on. It's not really a detailed uh, insight into it, just an introduction to it. But this is for like a quick and easy setup, all these presets here. You can go to the advanced settings to further, uh, I guess further kind of adjust your settings here if you want to. But I usually just go up to the top here, the manual setup and click on add smudger setup. Now it gives you these categories here, and each one of these categories has presets applied to them of the materials for them. And to see those materials, just click on each any one you want. It's all the same, pretty much the same pattern, whether it's dust, smudge, scratches, just click on each any one you want. We're gonna stick with dust first and click on add dust. <coughs> Excuse me, it's that summer weather. Now you can see that it applies dust rather quickly to our model. And like I said before, doing, doing this with Suzanne is very, very helpful because if you look at Suzanne's 
at the top of her head, you'll see the dust particles on her head and on the top of her ears and a little bit inside of her ears. But when it comes to like the sides of her face here and this part of her face that's kind of uh, stays in, there is no dust. So it's applying the dust the way dust would fall on uh, an object in real life. Now it has a lot of presets, a good amount of presets too. You can toggle through uh, different dust patterns. So you can click on this icon and have different dust patterns here. Or you can toggle through by pressing previous or next. Now you can change the color of the dust here. Let's click on this uh, section and kind of turn this to like a bluish color. If you want to continue to any color you want or realistic dust kind of brownish and there you go you can increase the amount of dust by um, changing the multiplier you crank this up you can see the dust is starting to increase you pull it down the dust gets less now as I said earlier the dust is not on the size of her face or on the size of her uh, of this model at all, but you can actually apply dust to the side of it. Let's say you have a bookcase, <clears throat> excuse me, a bookcase, or you have, um, I guess you can say a car, something along those lines. And you want dust to be on the side of that uh, object. You can increase that or add dust to the side of it by increasing this parameter here. And that adds dust to the size of it. Uh, the influence map also affects it too, in terms of uh, the amount of dust. If you pull it down, it'll kind of make the dust particles a more fine. If you pull it up, it makes it less, it makes it more patchy looking. So it's up to you what you want to do. Now that same pattern or same process goes through all of these smudges. Let's apply a smudge to this, add smudges. And once again, you have different kinds of smudges. And this has more uh, to choose from. It has smudges, stains, wipes, other. If you go to stain, let's apply the stain to this. And you can delete whatever uh, dust, smudge, or scratch by clicking on that trash icon. And it will delete that, uh, I guess, that uh, texture from uh, your model. And once again, it's, this one has. 1k texture 2k 4k but remember the higher the textures it'll look more defined but the only problem is it'll take longer to render out now the base color here is white and let's change it to a different color so we can see a little bit let's change it to blue now if you look at it it doesn't look like it's actually doing anything or you can't really see uh, the smudges or the stains on it if you don't see the stains on it, increase the BCM intensity. Pull that up. You can see the, you can see the uh, the smudges on it now. And the fall off, you can do the same thing with the fall off. But all the uh, the stains, scratches, wear and tear, they're they're all there. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind. <coughs> excuse me again. It's the weather. It's been raining out here a lot, so my throat has been having to clear out quite a bit. So I. Um, Pardon me for clearing my throat so much. But if we click on the wear part, the cavity works when it comes to inside of like hollow objects or hollow parts of your model. That's where you can see the cavity is happening. And the edge wear happens on like sharp edges of your model. Like if Suzanne had like a sharp peak here, you see the edge wear on her, but you can't really see it uh, because everything is kind of smooth. Now the droplet is something interesting too. It says the droplets only work, or they work best uh, when something is UV unwrapped. Uh, but I've seen that for myself personally, I don't have to UV unwrap it. If I add droplets to my model here, you can see the droplets right there. Now they're kind of big, but to adjust the size of it, go to droplet scale. And because it's using like a point kind of setup as opposed to a texture setup, you have to increase it to make the droplets smaller. So as I pull it up, as I make the droplets scale bigger, it makes the droplets a lot smaller. And once again, these also have different, it has like three different uh, patterns when it comes to the droplets. But yeah, this is the Smudger Pro uh, add-on. And like I said before, it works pretty good. 
it gives you some really good results on your models. And that's today's Blender Quick Tip. So I'm hoping that this uh, tutorial, this introduction to this add-on is helpful for those of you who are watching. And once again, I really, really, really appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel. Those of you who have subscribed in the past, those of you who are subscribing now, and those of you who are subscribing in the future, really do appreciate it because it's really helping the channel grow pretty fast. And I really thank you guys for your support and for your help. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right, adios. Self zipped, but the folder that or the zip file that contains the folders for the smudges, you unzip that. And once it's been unzipped, you can you can open it up yourself and see what it contains, which is what which is this right here. It's like I'm kind of repeating all this stuff, but yeah, this is what you it will contain for you to use. And you're like, <laughs> all right.